Yes, now it's for Inspiration FM Lagos, your number one family radio station. Welcome to the morning edition of our Premier League Zone. Now we are here uh, to discuss uh, the Premier League. Unfortunately, no match for us to review today, but not to worry, it gives us always a chance to talk about something else. My name, by the way, is Leia Adulujo. I am joined by Bode Bruno, Anthony Adulu, and uh, Gideon Keshi. And today we will be discussing the Ballon d'Or. Yes, uh, the 30 man shortlist uh, for the Ballon d'Or has been released and half of uh, names on that list are all based in the english uh, premier league another pointer uh, to the fact that english premier league is arguably uh, the number one league in uh, the world and today what we'll be doing is to examine uh, the chances of uh, the premier league players on the list and uh, we'll try to pick out the players or the player that we think uh, can end up being named as the best footballer uh, on the planet by the way uh the final award that will be presented on the 29th of november so that's just um, about uh, five or six weeks uh from now so the first thing we want to do is to list out all the premier league players on the list and then we'll try to pick out the ones that we think have the best chances of going on to win uh the ballon d'Or award for the uh year Cesar Spilicueta is there, the Chelsea uh, defender. Kevin De Bruyne is there. Ruben Diaz, Bruno Fernandes, Phil Foden, Jorginho, Harry Kane, Ungolo Conte, Romelu Lukaku, Riyad Mahrez, Mason Mount, Cristiano Ronaldo, Mohamed Salah, Raheem Sterling, and Luis Suarez. So those are the Premier League-based players on that Ballon d'Or shortly. So Anthony Ajulu, let's begin with you. Which of these players do you think has at the best chance of being named the best player in the world for the year 2021 honestly no I, no 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 i'm not saying which of them will win it <laughs> okay. i said which of them has, has the, the best, best chance, chance. Okay. which of them has the best chance um, yes i'd say i'd say ngolo conte probably ngolo conte why um i think i think um he's been the best uh, midfielder in the world, best defensive midfielder in the world for a long time. Now. No, we are not, and, no, we are no, not talking about for a long time. Let, let's let's limit our analysis I'm to 2021. Yes, I'm yes. professing my statement. Yes. I, know, I know where I'm going with this. Yeah. He's been the best midfielder in the world for a long time now. And his, um, his performances, um, you know, came to the fore mm. for Chelsea, particularly in the Champions League run. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. He was, I think he was game was that you know Sevilla when they went away from home and if you other games like that mm. where he was breaking up play and blitzing everybody in the midfield mm. got a few goals as well in Chelsea's Champions League run so I think um in terms of the um, Chelsea player with the best chance mm. I think Golo Conte he um played really really well in the Champions League mm. last season he was excellent in the midfield changed up the defense whenever he needed to he was just always the uh his usual self mm. full of energy bombing for when he needed to and like I said got a few goals as well I think um, that's the best player. Mm. Uh, that's the best chance England has why, of winning. Why would you go Ngolo Conte instead of Jorginho? Especially given the fact that Jorginho did not only win the Champions League, he also won the European Championship with Italy. Um, and the thing is, the thing is, Ngolo Conte's performances, uh, sorry, Jorginho's performances cannot be compared to Ngolo Conte's performances. Why? His How? Impact in the teams that won those titles mm. cannot be compared. I think Golo Conte was more impactful. Mm. His, um, his, um, his impact could be felt and seen mm. by everybody. I'm sorry, due respect to Golo, to Jorginho and due respect to Chelsea fans, mm. all Jorginho did was keeping the ball moving. He just kept the ball moving, kept it ticking over, got the ball moving along very quickly. Got the ball moving along very quickly. It, it was, was nothing spectacular. It was being not being no, out. It was nothing <laughs> spectacular or you know, um, eye catching in any of Georgina's mm. performances. Mm. Chelsea fans will beg to differ because he's their highest goal scorer. By penalties. By penalties. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> we, we, we've got Anthony's opinion. So, Anthony, <laughs> you're, you're going uh, Ungolo Conte okay. number one. Okay, yes. so if this was Premier League Ballon d'Or now, and, and, <laughs> and, and we were asking you to pick your top three, uh, Ungolo Conte number one, Georgina number two? No. Who's number two then? <laughs> <laughs> Who's number two? <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, you, you want Chelsea fans to, to no, no, no. I mean, I'm going to ignore, yes, ignore I Chelsea fans. Ignore um, them. I mean, they have their own opinions. That's their business. Let, let's be objective and, and and present our most most objective uh, submissions here. So, Ungolo Conte number one. Who's number two? Um, 
Romelu Lukaku. Lukaku, okay. Yes, number two. Why is that? Um, of course, scored loads of goals for Inter Milan, yeah. led them to the title yeah. for the first time. In my, how many so years? You're, you're basically so going for impact and not just not the that won the title. Impact. You Which, to, yeah. your, your, your impact has to be felt yeah. on, your, yeah. on, your, on, your, on the way on your team's um, title win. Mm, mm. You have to show that yes, I was quite important mm. in my team winning this title. Not just one of the, not, not just one of the pack. Yeah, and, 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 they, and they don't come more important than Romelu Lukaku. Scores lots of Milan goals exactly, and, yeah. and to be fair, he scored lots of goals at the Euros as well yeah. for Belgium. Although they crashed out to the quarterfinal, mm. he scored a game last week against them um, France. Yeah, from, if I'm not mistaken as yeah. well. So um, he does get get a lot of goals mm. for Belgium, for France, extra for Belgium, for Inter Milan, mm. and he started well at Chelsea as yeah. well. So I think um, Romelu Lukaku. Will be second on that list. And number three. And number three, I would say. Um, hmm, hmm, Maybe I should hmm. run through the names again. Run through them again. Alfred Lequeta, Kevin De Bruyne, Ruben Diaz, Bruno Fernandez, uh, Phil Foden, Harry Kane, uh, Ryan Mahrez, Mason Mount, Cristiano Ronaldo, Mohamed Salah, Raheem Sterling, and I know this is not there. <laughs> I think Lucas is on my list. Um, I, I tell you, Ruben Diaz. Ruben Diaz. Ruben Diaz okay. again. Mm. Another player whose impact was felt. Mm. City won the title. Um, he's been he was named PFA player of the year and football writers player of the year, if I'm not mm. mistaken. Um, did really, really well, mm. uh, both for Portugal and for, uh, for um, Manchester City. And of course, this would be my top three if I were to pick from the player. all right. So, Anthony goes, uh, listen very carefully. Ugo will come to number one, he goes Romelu Lukaku, number two, and uh, Kevin De Bruyne, sorry, and Ruben Diaz, Ruben Diaz. number three. As far as the Premier League players are concerned in this Ballon d'Or race, note no Jorginho. Uh, according to <laughs> Anthony Ajubu, uh, you guys can let us Doesn't know. It, you sorry. guys can let us know what you think on WhatsApp zero eight one seven three one three six one nine three zero eight one seven three one three six one nine three. You can also go on Facebook. By the way, we are live at Inspiration FM ninety two point three, and let us know what you think about the conversation. So we've got Anthony's opinions and thoughts. Let's move on to Buddy Bruno. Buddy, let 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 warn you. Let me warn you now. <laughs> <laughs> please don't mention Bruno Fernandes or Cristiano Ronaldo. Why not? Please don't set any United agenda. No, 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 Anthony, Anthony has set a very good tone for the conversation. Yeah, so, 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 Three from from the Premier League for for the Ballon d'Or award. Um, Let's start with which player do you think has the best chance of winning it from the Premier League uh, this year? It has to be N'Golo Kante. Okay, fair enough. Now, um, it was it was quite pivotal yep. to Chelsea winning the Champions League last season. Mm. Look at the performances against Real Madrid, home and away, and the final as well against Manchester uh, uh, City. Where yeah. where yeah, I, I think in the three matches they won the Man of the Match award, yep. mm-hmm. and you can't you can't take away the fact that Kante does 45% of the job for this Chelsea side. And ah, 45, no, no. Yeah, because <laughs> because when you have a single man that <laughs> does the job that. of two players, mm. basically, and every Chelsea player would admit to the fact that this guy is a machine. Mm. I don't know where the old talk of Jorginho <laughs> came out from, from because I remember, I remember during the years as well where we had yeah. that particular conversation mm. and a lot of people said, oh, Jorginho, blah, blah, blah. And I said, a lot of times we overlook the amount of effort mm. N'Golo Kante put into this Chelsea team. I'm not just Chelsea, even France as well. Uh, see, it's unfortunate that Chelsea didn't. Maybe if Chelsea had gone ahead to win the Premier League or something, maybe the noise would have been more. Mm. And possibly if Kante was a bit more flamboyant in mm. terms of personality wise and all that, maybe his name would be out there. But unfortunately, mm. he doesn't get the amount of credit that yep. he truly deserves. Mm. And my first pick has to be Ngolo Kante. All right, second and third. Uh, for second, I'll go for Ruben Diaz. Okay. Uh, for the sole reason that he joined City at the time when everyone felt, mm, City, are you sure this guy can actually cope? Mm. But he joined that team, brought some, some stability in defense, and City went ahead mm. to win the Premier League. Right. And my third has to be Romelu Lukaku. Okay. Uh, yes, um, Cristiano might have outscored him mm. in the Serie A, but at the end of the day, Ronaldo's goals mm. did not help Juventus win uh, the Scudetto. So, uh, Lukaku for me, uh, he had an awesome season, yeah. but unfortunately at the Euros, uh, things didn't just go to plan. Maybe if Chris, uh, Ronaldo, <laughs> possibly if he had a better Euros, maybe he could come into that conversation. Yeah. But at the moment, uh, you look at the Nations League as well. Yeah. 
Lukaku played very well, but unfortunately, Belgium didn't just <laughs> do too well. So, for me, Kante, um, Diaz, and of course, Lukaku. All right, let's move on to Gideon. Uh, basically, Anthony and Gordy have gone <laughs> the same set of players, although they mixed up the second and third positions. Uh, they switched up rather the second and third positions. Basically, Ungolo Kante, uh, Lukaku, and uh, Ruben Diaz. Gideon, are you in agreement or you are Team Jorginho? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I think my first pick would definitely shock a lot of people, but I'll go with Romelu Lukaku first. Okay. Um, it would have been an obvious decision to go with Ngolo Kante with all the points. I mean, Anthony and Buddy have given, but mm. I would go with Lukaku because he's, you know what, would I say, reinvented himself, basically. Mm. Um, this was once a player that we all had actually thought um, after he left Manchester United, his time was done, but mm. he found new life, um, found new form, and just basically transformed himself. Probably one of the top three most prolific strikers in the world currently so i I'd, I'd definitely give him a look at yes he's not you know shaped that sort of form in chelsea so far but give him time I, I believe he will come good i mean the man always knows how to get goals mm. and we saw that um in belgium's game before they lost um and, and eventually played the third place finish mm. in the UEFA nations league so secondly obvious i'll give him the Lucante. i mean the, say all you can say about the man but the man is an integral part of that chelsea um you know that chelsea puzzle then mm. it's uh, like that so to speak and also in the French national team he always knows how to put in the work and whenever he's absent he can always feel um he's absent so definitely mm. in the second choice for me and the third i would have said Bruno fernandez but i'm sure mm. everybody would look at me we are not talking about palon d'or <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's palon d'or no pen on d'or these are the kind of things i expect all right um shortly i would give um, Kevin De Bruyne. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, um, Kevin, Kevin De Bruyne has been an integral and very, very, you know, ideal part of mm-hmm. that Manchester City um, team. And also, um, even in the Belgian national team, is always really, really good to help. I mean, even yesterday, he got that assist, I mean, for their goal against Italy. So, mm-hmm. Kevin De Bruyne, for me, is one player I feel that doesn't get as much accolades as he deserves. Right. Yes, we understand that Man City have not won any Champions League, but I mean, Kevin De Bruyne has to be um one of the contenders for the ballon d'Or. yeah and i was wondering what harry kane was doing on the list but then i then again i've just seen that he was top scorer in the premier league and also the top assist maker in the league uh, last, last season. season so i think he was he was well he's, he's well deserving i should say uh of his uh, spots on the list anyway uh, so you've heard the opinions of the guys let us know what you think about uh the premier league uh, players chances uh of winning this year's ballon d'Or. 0700 is the number to call it and also uh reach us on whatsapp 0817 and on facebook uh, at inspiration fm 92.3 you can also watch us live uh, on that platform so uh, let, let's go you know more generic now anthony um but you've mentioned ngulu kante ruben diaz and uh, kevin de Bruyne. but can any one of these guys really win the award no. and if not who's going to win the award no they can't none of them can win it actually so um, who, why not well nobody's nobody's impact in the last year nobody's impact in the last year mm. has been as huge and as brilliant as Robert Lewandowski. well they mm-hmm. say he's playing in the farmer's pig <laughs> yeah, that, that's the, the year before he won the Champions League. He's, exactly. he's done yeah, it. That's the year Farm, before. Farmers League or not? Um, say he plays in the Farmers League. Yeah, yeah, Farmers League or not? Whenever he comes up against the teams that don't play in the so-called <laughs> Farmers League, he sticks it to them time after time after time. Mm. So he's done. He's done the business against all the big teams mm. across Europe. We've seen him already this season. Put two past Barcelona mm. in the Champions League as well this season. Um, I think he, he broke get Muller's record mm. um, yeah. for goals in the Bundesliga. Um, in a single season. In a single season. Yeah. I think all competitions got over 50 goals mm. um, in, the, alone, yeah. in the season where that, that's under consideration for this award as well. So he's been brilliant for um, Bayern Munich. And again, nobody comes. And then, speaking of impact, mm. his goals led to the title yeah. for Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. So all of this just means. It has to be nobody. There's also Leo Messi as well. Bad yeah. poor, poor season for Barcelona. He still scored 30 goals uh, for Barca. And, but then uh, again, he only won the Copa del Rey. Yes. It doesn't really count. But if, if you're making an argument for Jorginho for winning the Euros, then... I'm not. I'm not one of those people. No, no, sorry. Did you say you only won the Copa del Rey? Oh, yeah. no, he also won the Copa America. Oh, yes, the Copa America. Oh, that's yeah. true. And I should also add that he scored three penalties out of his 30 goals. <laughs> so it's messy. You can make out whatever you want to make <laughs> out from that. <laughs> so he scored only three penalties. So only. So we can't call him Pessy. 
only three penalties. You can call if you, if you check brother one. Yes, you Fernandez and Penalty. Let me check. Let me, let me, let me check. <laughs> I think Fernandez got 18 goals and nine, and nine penalties. <laughs> penalties. <laughs> and body wants us to do in Ballon d'Or. Anyway. Let me say that again in case you guys did not hear it. He scored 30 goals in the league and it was supposed to be a poor season for Messi. Yep. Three goals with 30 goals in La Liga, only three penalties. Only three penalties. But, but like, at the end of the day, some people would argue that there's no argument. It's an European award, <laughs> not international, basically. Yeah, players playing in Europe. Playing in Europe. Yeah, and, and Messi's playing in Europe. So, in Europe. Yeah, so and, get... and again, like you said, the Copa America, not yeah. only did he win the Copa America, he was, he was top scorer, yeah. top yeah. assister. Give, give it to Messi, Messi. give it to Messi, so give it on. to Messi. Come on. I, I, think, I think he will come second. Man, I'm just kidding. If, 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 if they give it to Jorginho, we will go to we will riot. We will go to I said last Saturday. We will go to we will go to Jorginho riot or any Chelsea player. We will riot. They will spoil that ball on the floor. If they give it to that guy, we will go to France and carry back at. Hello, sorry. Did you enjoy this video? Hit the subscribe button for more. Leave a comment and like. Thank you.